Magnet television. Magnet television. Magnet television. You're watching magnet television because what else are you going to do? Oh, hey. This is uh, Princess Goes to the Butterfly Museum. I'm Matt. I'm Mike. Peter. What's up? Favorite, favorite all time song? Whoa, favorite all time song. That's hard. How do you choose? How, <clears throat> how do you choose? Well, you go through all the songs and then you pick your favorite. <laughs> all right, all right. So, all the songs. Um, let's see. We had a few. Um, how much is that doggy in the window? Yes. Thrown out on the Star Spangled Banner. Star Spangled Banner. I mean, but the flea from flea version from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, the bass version. He did it at the Lakers game once. It was pretty sick. Uh, I think the live version of um, Oh Sister on Hard Rain, mm. Dylan album. Mm. That one's. I mean, you know, it's hard to pick a favorite, but that that one's a favorite. So uh, I picked a real one. We'll go with that. Wow. <laughs> I like that song. <laughs> you'll, you'll, oh, you'll did you want um, Yeah, I mean, I feel like um, damn, there's just so much. Uh, I don't know, just thinking about Prince's Purple Rain. Oh, kind yeah. of any song on that album can kind of, uh, kind of fit into that category. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's this song on um, Fleetwood Mac, Tusk, which is kind of an amazing double record because only one of the records is actually really good the other one kind of sucks but it's called uh, Last Call Last Call um, uh, today that is my all time favorite song it's just it feels at the moment you know really <clears throat> cool jam Lindsey Buck can have seen the princess goes to the butterfly scene still <laughs> So, well, um, yeah, yes. Album that changed changed your life. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick um, Astral Weeks by Van Morrison because oh, yeah, when I was in Vermont working in this covered bridges theater, like just south of the Canadian border, one summer it got stuck in my tape deck. So it was my soundtrack for like three six straight months, and I never got tired of it. And it was the perfect. You know, summer Vermont, bucolic, verdant, kind of sexy vibe. Um, yeah, and I think it changed my life just because it became so completely embedded in my brain. And I love it. Thank God. That's good. That you love it. Um, changing my life could be, um, man. Could be Eurythmics. Um, I would say, um, yeah, any any early Eurythmics album was kind of like all I would listen to when I was a kid on the headphones. Um, that and maybe Raising Hell by Run DMC. Um, not an obvious, but seeing those Muppets um, being Steven Tyler and Joe Perry. Run DMC on MTV. They all came together. They all came together. Like, yeah. wow, this is so, so heavy and hard and so fun. Uh, uh, yeah, I was, I was uh, going through a really bad breakup, probably the biggest breakup of my life, and I went out to Hawaii, and my partner, who was supposed to come out and join me decided she got sick and couldn't go so I was just on Hawaii on the island of Kauai by myself and I had a rental car and I had uh, uh, it was right when Beck's Mutations came out and uh, I just had that album on for the two or three weeks that I was there like and I you know listened to it a hundred times or more and it just sort of felt like the music that was going to lead to my next life. It really just got me through that, that time of that Bex mutation. See, yeah, it got me through that weird transition. Same, you found a back bridge. A kind of what? A back bridge. Exactly. A back bridge. Back bridge. 
first. Oh, fuck. Um, best concert uh, I participated in was upstate in Poughkeepsie with Natalie Merchant. It was the whole band decided to do uh, pop brownies, and we had a mobile recording truck outside, and it was just. It was one of those Odyssey nights, and it was, I'll never forget it, it was amazing. Is that okay? Yeah. Matt? Yeah. Oh wait, I'm not on the mic. Oh, <laughs> next should time. We, should we? Oh, next time, all right. You can get on it now. All right. Um, well, let's get, get off the button, Matt. Watch out for this thing here. Right? <laughs> yeah. I'm just worried. Yeah. Um, it's a hazard. Yeah, they do call it the persuasion. Awesome. Green machine. The green machine. Um, did, so favorite concerts? Um, it's hard. Maybe the Tibetan Freedom Concert, um, which are always awesome, and getting to participate in those, and being on stage with Patti Smith and Lenny Kay, um, Dev Hines, Debbie Harry, um, for the end of the night sing-along, Love Fest. Those are kind of amazing. I always remember those. Yeah. I saw Jane's Addiction in 1990, I think, uh, in Vienna, Austria. I was, and um, it was like, I mean, the place was like, you know, smaller than Mercury Lounge. Mm. You know, tiny. He, Perry Farrell came out and just downed an entire bottle of red wine. Um, before the show started, and there were all these big, tough, leather-clad Viennese guys, and he was just poking. He's just like, he's like, all your all your famous musicians are dead, man. They're buried, man. And they were getting upset, but they didn't feel like they could get really upset because it didn't seem so cool for them to be all about like. Defending Beethoven and Mozart and Haydn and all that, but that was a really good show. Wow, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I saw them in '91, but it was at Madison Square Garden, which is crazy that you saw them. Yeah, before. it was like the same, probably the same tour, or yeah, yeah, they were just like nobody knew who they were. That's nice. I saw them in '87 in yeah. Boston, and TT there, and it was smaller than this room, basically. Yeah. And was he all in the white makeup and the white dreads? Like he, this was right when they first started. No, it wasn't like that's a, that nothing shocking look. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, yeah. he was. Yeah, maybe he cut his hair at that point. Yeah, that's it. Shit. Next question. Don't touch your face. That's called indicating. <laughs> Um, hmm. Most embarrassing musical moment. My wife says that I'm unembarrassable. Can that can that just be our answer that we did? <laughs> We're unembarrassable. Most embarrassing musical moment. I remember listening to uh, the radio in the car. My mom was driving, and Billy Ocean's Caribbean Queen came on, and mom. Uh, I, I, she sang along a little bit, and I was like, "What are you saying?" And she, she thought that he was saying "Caribou Twist." Caribou Twist instead of <laughs> Caribou Queen. You know, I, and I was embarrassed because I was a teenager. I was we were friends, preteen maybe. I don't know. Building on that, I had uh, I used to think that Van Halen song, um, "You Might as Well Jump." Was actually called Maxwell Jump. Like, and I just imagined that there was some dude named Maxwell. Maxwell Jump! Like, he was on a ledge and he was gonna jump. People were down on the ground going, like, Maxwell Jump! Maxwell Jump! I thought that for years and I was saying it until somebody's like, no, he's saying, might as well jump. Well, at the end, he's saying that to try to persuade. He's like, Maxwell Jump! You might as well jump! Maxwell. <laughs> Matt? Oh, wow, man. It's so funny. It's really funny. Um, mm. yeah. oh, I guess maybe. Yeah, that was the under Van Halen. Eddie Van Halen started playing the keyboard. <laughs> and Maxwell. 
No, nah, he has every right to play whatever he wants. I think my most embarrassing moments so all have had to do with um, Stephen Trask in one way or another. Who's the, um, the brilliant guy behind Hedwig and so many other amazing things. Um, just whenever I see him, my fingers just do whatever they want because I'm so enraptured by his manliness and his beauty, I guess. Um, my fingers just do whatever. That's it. Makes your caribou twist. Caribou twists. Maxwell thinks about jumping. <laughs> Sine.